Akshaya Tritiya and Chandan Yatra. While you're looking over here, the accent's going to be over here on the screen. So, Chandan Yatra, at least my growing up in the Hare Krishna movement, we were much more familiar with Chandan Yatra because Chandan Yatra lasts for 21 days. And it's uh, a time when lots of sandalwood paste is prepared and placed on the deity and so forth. And it has to do with the season in India. It's very hot, very hot. And Chandan is cooling. So it's a festival for the deity's pleasure where Chandan is placed on the deity. You're going to see some really nice photographs of deities with completely smeared with chandam. And the beginning of day, in the, um, well, we'll see the Vaishnav calendar day is Akshaya Tritiya. We'll start with what's found in Hari Bhakti Vilas, for those of you that don't know. Hari Bhakti Vilas was written by Sanatana Goswami or written by Hari Gopal Bhatta Goswami and further edited and published by Sanatan Goswami, often just attributed to Sanatan Goswami. So it's a manual on how to observe everything that Vaishnavas do. This is the section that deals with Akshaya Tachiya and how to observe it. There's a series of six verses starting with uh, the 14th Vilas starting verse 405. The Supreme Lord, the Vaishnava Havadi, the Supreme Lord is the benefactor of all kinds of living entities. He created Farley on the third day of the bright fortnight of the month of Vishaka. The Lord also caused the Ganges, which consists of three streams to appear within this world descending from Brahmaloka. On the auspicious day of the Ganges' appearance, one should offer a yagya by offering barley as an oblation and should worship Lord Vishnu by offering of barley item. You do. One should give barley and charity to the brahmanas and give them food made of barley with barley also. Probably it's a big deal in that trade. On the third day of the bright fortnight of the month of Vishaka, Treta Yuga began. Religious principles started and the Pravriti Marg was begun because this particular day is very dear to Lord Hari. It is known as Akshaya Tritiya. Whatever pious act one performs on this day, such as taking holy bath, giving charity, offering karana or shraddhas, doing japa or chanting mantras, gives inexhaustible results. Get a lot of chanting. Those who perform the worship of Lord Vishnu with barley on this day and perform shraddha to the forefathers are certainly recognized as Vaishnavas and the life of the Lord's. It has everything. How to observe Janmashtri. Everything. How to, how to get married. How to take the job. How to mantra the brahmanas. And so many Vaishnava outcomes. a day of Lord Vishnu, many different aspects of Lord Vishnu. This is the amazing as of Mahavishnu. And where is Mahavishnu? In the midst of
Karana Ocha. Karana, this is Karana Dakshayi Vishnu. Karana Ocha. And when the Karana Ocha descends into this world, how does the Karana Ocha descend into this world? Lord Vamana pierces the covering of the universe, which is floating in the Karana Ocha, and some ocean water comes in. And it descends where? Descends to Ramaloka. But there's a stop there. On the, the special arrangement, on the special arrangement, it descends from Brahmaloka. There's some interest. There's a stop over there. Rubaloka. Then descending through the Tapanishi China, down to the Sur of China. Okay, then Ganges reaches the Earth planet. There's the ship catching Ganga. That's here. Bhagiratha. Bhagiratha? Bhagiratha. It's Bhagiratha. Bhagiratha is the center of the Sagra. Sagra entered in the alignment of Sagra. Sagra, Bhagiratha, three generations later, because the purpose of Yeah, yeah. But so, but they, they, he had a Kamadenu, and the Chatriyas wanted the Kamadenu, so they harmed his father. And Parashram 
let them have it. He went on a warpath with his chopper, or choppers. Looks like he had manifested a few arms. He is a form of Lord Vishnu. Of course, we find him uh, in a, some other places in Lord Ramachandra's pastimes. In Ramachandra's pastimes, what happened? He had a bow of Lord Vishnu, right? Right? Everybody knows that one. He had the bow of Lord Vishnu. And he gave the bow of Lord Vishnu to, to Ram, said, I heard you broke Shiva's bow. So let's see what you can do with this one. And he drew it back. He said, now they've drawn it back, what am I going to do? And all the strength of Parashram was transferred at once to Lord Ramachandra. That's a lot of strength. And then he was supposed to go back into the Himalayas because he had taken a pledge that he wouldn't move about the earth. So he went to the Himalayas and the higher regions. There's some other nice pastimes of Parashram. Who, who did Parashram give his military skills to? Some besides you. Parashram gave his military skills to... Starts with a D. Huh? Another Brahmana. He gave his skills to a Brahmana. The Brahmana's name was Dronacharya. Ah. And there was um, Dronacharya who gave those same skills to the Pandavas. And then the Pandavas were in the situation where they had to kill Dronacharya. Very difficult. Very difficult. So Parshuram has a role to play in Krishna's pastimes, in Ramchandra's pastimes, and on Akshaya Tritiya, that's his appearance day. It is said that Vyasadeva commenced dictating Mahabharata Ganesh on Akshaya Tritiya. Boy, are we fortunate to have Vyasadeva provide for us Mahabharata, what to speak of the whole of Bhagavad Gita, starting on Akshaya Tritiya. Also on Akshaya Tritiya, that's the day when in exile, the Pandavas and Draupadi were in big anxiety, not for their safety, but they, were, they, they liked being in the forest, but because they were so wonderful personalities, many persons went to see them in the forest. And when persons came to see them in the forest, Draupadi was in anxiety. I can't prepare meals for them. So Yudhisthira volunteered. I'll go perform austerities and request some help from the sun god. Sun god was very pleased with his austerities. And this nice painting shows he gave him a Pat or Patra. And the Patra or Pat was for Draupadi. And Draupadi was to cook in that pot and it would produce unlimited, unlimited, one little pot, unlimited, until she ate. So she would eat last. And there's a nice pastime with the Dravasa Muni coming and all of that. There was a piece of spinach, and Krishna ate that piece of spinach. Dravasamuni left because he felt full. So this is the day when the sun god gave this Akshaya Patra to Yudhisthira so that Draupadi could be able to properly serve guests that came to visit them in the forest including Dravasamuni and 60,000 followers. On this Akshaya Chati day, it's the same day when Draupadi received unlimited sari from Krishna in the vicious assembly celebrated event. This young girl, I don't know her name. Do you know this story? Can you tell the story? Take your mask so we can hear the story. You're not sure? Okay. 
Would you like to know the story? You don't want to know the story. Would you like me to tell you the story? Yes, okay. You see Dropity, right? She's in a yellow sari there. And uh, the you see um, over on the right side of that painting, there's five Pandavas. They have their shirts off and all just behind Dropity, all of their armor and helmets and crowns and jewelry and all their valuables. They lost everything in a gambling match. You know about the gambling match? You remember that one? Gambling match? Shakuni, he was he was a cheater. He knew how to cheat playing dice. And they lost everything. They lost their kingdom. They lost their, their title. They lost everything. And then, and then, and then they said, we want you to gamble Dropity. And Yudhisthira agreed. And they lost. So you see in the painting, there's Dushashana. He's a very bad person. He, under the order of Karna, who is pictured up there on the left side with that red cloth, red shirt. And there's the blind Dhritarashtra sitting on the royal throne. And on one side is Bhima, and the other side is um, Dronacharya. And it's decided that they would strip her naked in the public assembly, in a royal assembly. So Dushashana started pulling and pulling and pulling. Draupadi was really strong. She was holding on to her sari, but Dushashana was stronger. And so she threw both arms up in the air and called out, Hey, Krishna, hey, Govinda! Look at that. Krishna appeared. And from the sky, he provided unlimited sari. And they, Dushashin is pulling and pulling, and the cloth is piling up and piling up, and he got exhausted because it was unlimited sari. And that Akshaya event, unlimited sari event, took place at Akshaya Chatiya. And on Akshaya Chatiya, that's the day when Sudama Brahman came to visit Krishna. Sudama Brahman? Krishna, Krishna went to school. You go to school? Okay. Krishna went to school. Krishna went to the school of Sandipani Muni. And one of his classmates was Sudama. And uh, Krishna graduated really quick. He didn't have to go to, to school for so many years. He went for two months. He finished everything in two months. He was like really good at school. And then he went back to, to Mathura. And Sudama later married. Of course, Krishna later also married. Krishna became a, a, a Kshatriya. And Sudama became a Brahmana. So the Brahmana, Sudama came to visit Krishna one time in Dwarka. And the day that he came to visit was Akshaya Chatiya. It's a very beautiful painting. Krishna immediately stood up when Sudama came. He offered him the same seat where he was sitting, and he worshipped him behind Krishna, just behind Krishna. That's Rukmini, and she's making arrangements for paraphernalia for literally worshipping Sudama. Very nice chapter in the Krishna's pastimes in Dwarka. Very wonderful description. Now there's another uh, description that takes place in Skanda Purana. And in Skanda Purana, there's a description of Jagannath giving detailed instructions, Lord Jagannath giving detailed instructions to King Indradumna how he wanted 
Akshaya Tritiya to be the beginning of a big festival for Lord Jagannath. And here's what appears in Chaitanya Bhagwat. This is Bhakti Siddhanta's language describing what's in Skanda Purana. Lord Jagannath ordered his servant, the exalted Vaishnav Sri Indra Dumnadev, to smear fragrant sandalwood paste on his body on the day of Akshaya Chatiya, which occurs during the waxing moon in the month of Vishaka. That's today, the third day of the waxing moon. Sri Madan Mohan, that's the festival or Utsav deity, is brought on a palanquin from the temple to Sri Narendra Sarovar every day. 21 days. From Akshay Tritiya in Vishaka up to the 8th day of the waiting moon in Jayishta. During the Chandan Yatra festival of Sri Madan Mohan Dev, he enjoys boat pastimes in the lake along with his ministers, headed by Lokanath and Mahadev. So there are three. There's Jagannath, Baladev, and Subhadra. That's the main deities of the Jagannath temple. And then there's festival deities, or Utsav Murtis, headed by Madan Mohan and his two ministers, Lokanath and Mahadev. And on this occasion, they come out. They're set in what looks like the Rathiatra carts, but uh, they're, they're much smaller. And in procession every day, every day, for 21 days, in the morning, big festival, they're taken in procession, and they follow a certain path heading for Narendra Sarovar. Narendra Sarovar. Sarovar means lake. And uh, it's a place right in Puri. And they, they place the three deities, as you see, on a boat. It's a boat festival. And, you know, music and mantras and, you know, things that Brahmanas like to do. Here the Brahmanas are assembled and they're doing a puja on the boat. And uh, then they go for a ride. And uh, the shore is on the, on the far side. It goes into the evening. A very nice festival. And then in procession, the, the deities are taken off the boat and brought back to the temple. Put to rest. They're exhausted after a long day's festival. And then the next day, and then the next day, and then the next day. And then the next day. And each day, they have different dresses. Like, for example, one day, Madan Mohan is dressed as the Sadbuja form of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And different, 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 different. Every day. Every day. Every day. And then taken out in procession. And so it's, it's very grand. A, a great great ceremony, really hot. Remember, it's really hot season there. But uh, the, they, so they go to a nice, the nice cool Narendra Sarovar lake. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he also liked Narendra Sarovar. And the different pastimes were per, being performed. Splashing water pastimes and different, different pastimes. There's one pastime where Advaita Acharya took the mood of Anantashesh and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took the mood of Mahavishnu and Anantashesh was holding Mahavishnu in the Rendra Strobar. The ocean, right? Where Mahavishnu is, is in, in an ocean. You know that. There's another event on Akshaya Tritiya. It's found in Mahabharat, in the Virat Parva, fourth section, I'm going to read, where it describes the Agyata Vas, where they were incognito for one year, and they stayed at the place of 
King Virat. But they were in, in disguise. Agyata Vas means re residence spent in hiding. A period of time when the Pandavas lived incognito with Maharaj Virat in his palace. Each one of the five Pandava brothers had adopted disguises and new identities during their stay. Like, what was Arjuna? Everyone knows what Arjuna was. He was a eunuch and dance teacher. Etc. Anyway, when he finally found out their true identities, how did he find out? How did he find out? Who knows? Mahabharata. There was uh, the, the, the Kauravas heard that this powerful general, powerful general of King Virat was pulverized into pulp. His bones were broken. He was just a flabby bag. And that's only one person. That's Bhima. Because he, this general, was hitting on Draupadi. And Draupadi took shelter of Bhima. Protect me. I'll finish the guy. So the plan was made. Invite him to come see you at night. And I'll be there waiting instead of you. <laughs> and he smashed the guy into like broke his bones and little a bag of flesh so the core of found out it's got to be Pima so they came with their entire army and they're, they're clever you know demons are sometimes clever so they started harassing the cows and the coward men went to the king help so the king's son said, I'll take care of it. And Arjun said, I'll be your chariot driver. Well, you're a chariot driver. You're a dance teacher. Oh, don't. I, I know how to drive a chariot, too. Let's go. And so off they went. And uh, King Virat's son got beaten really badly. Arjun said, I'll take the. Uh, let's go over to where my weapons are. The weapons were were in the branches of a tree. Sal tree, if I remember. No, Sim, Sim what's which tree? Starts with an S. Sh Shilpa tree or something like that. Anyway, so we went and got his, his weapons. And you you be the chariot driver now and out, out so Arjuna single handedly single handedly repulsed the entire core of an army. And and they then they went back. Okay, the the cows are now safe. <laughs> and King Virat told his his dad, you 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 let me tell you what happened. This is not a dance teacher. He, he's somebody else. That's how they find out who they were somebody else. So when he found out they were somebody else, Maharaj Virat who was a great devotee of Krishna took the opportunity to ask Yudhisthira Maharaj to help him get darshan of Krishna. It was in the middle of the hot summer, so Yudhisthira instructed him that he should organize a boat festival for Krishna. Krishna and his older brother Balaram came there and blessed the king. It is said that at that time Maharaj Virat smeared sandalwood paste on their bodies to help cool them off. In Puri, it is said that the Chandan Yatra festival commemorates the devotion of Maharaj Virat for the Lord. It's a Vaishnava holiday, through and through. Here's a, a very old painting showing Yudhisthira in disguise as a Brahmana, went by the pseudonym of Kanka. And there's um, a dapper King Virat sitting there with his saber and uh, wanting Yudhisthira okay, and anyway, giving him some service. There's another celebrated event 
another celebrated event on Akshaya Tritiya. And um, this is in relation to, uh, I'm not sure what this photograph is. Let's go to this one. This is a, this is the uh, Shirakura Gopinath temple in Ramuna. Lord Chaitanya remained here for one night and he was very eager to receive the remnants of the sweet rice that was offered to Gopinath because he heard from Ishwar Puri, his spiritual master, what happened on Akshaya Chatiya. Here's what happened in Akshaya Chatiya. Madhavendra Puri was uh, a, in a predecessor. He was the spiritual master of Ishwar Puri. So Ishwar Puri is telling Lord Chaitanya, his disciple, about Madhavendra Puri pastime. And uh, here's from Chaitanya Charitamrita. Beginning from Madhvacharya down to the spiritual master of Madhavendrapuri, the Acharya named Lakshmi Pati Tirtha, there was no realization of devotional service and conjugal love. Sri Madhavendrapuri introduced the conception of conjugal love for the first time in the Madhvacharya Sampradaya. And this conclusion of the Madhvacharya Sampradaya was revealed by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu when he toured South India and met the Tattvavadis who supposedly belonged to the Madhvacharya Sampradaya. So we'll see shortly how that evolved, but Madhavendra Puri, there's many things to say, but Madhavendra Puri was on the topmost stage of the renounced order of life. There's Kutichak Bahutak and Paramahamsa and Paraprajakachari and Paramahamsa, four stages. Topmost stage was Madhvacharya. It has to do with what one would do for one's maintenance. I'll say, when uh, in, in the, tr the tradition is a young Brahmin would become married, and after some time in marriage, when he became elderly, he would, uh, with the with the blessings of his village, would take the order of sannyas. And the first step is he'd live outside the village and the people from the village would visit him daily and bring him some alms. And that was the first stage of sannyas. The second stage of sannyas, they wouldn't bring him alms, but he would go to the village and accept alms. Madhukari, second stage. The third stage, he, would, he wouldn't stay in one place. Hari Brajakacharya, he would travel here and there and accept alms wherever he was. And Paramahamsa stages, he wouldn't accept alms. But if people would bring him something, then he would accept. And if people didn't bring him something, he wouldn't ask. He would fast. Now in the West, somebody would die. They could survive. But in India, there's, the culture is such that an elevated sannyasi, people are very happy to approach the elevated sannyasi and offer alms. So that's what Madhavendra Puri was accustomed to. And one time, but as he was traveling to various holy places, one time he was in Vrindavan. That's what this painting is showing. You see his Tridanda Sannyas. And that little cowherd boy came in and brought a pot of milk and offered it to Madhavendra Puri. And it was by the side of Govardhan Hill, as a matter of fact. And um, just seeing this young boy, he was his hunger was gone. The boy left the pot, and uh, he drank the milk, and he, his mind wouldn't leave the young boy. And that in the evening, as he was um, resting, the boy appeared in his dream. He showed Madhavendra Puri, I reside in this bush, and because of this I suffer very much from severe cold rain showers, winds, and scorching heat. Please bring the people of the village and get them to take me out of this bush, then have them situate me nicely on top of the hill. And 
commenced my worship. I've been waiting for you to come. Finally, you came. And so Madhavendrapuri woke up. In the morning, he just got some assistance from some local village people. They had choppers because it was in a thick brush area. And sure enough, in the brush, just as the little boy showed, the deity form of Gopal was found. So he arranged for the worship of Gopal because he knew how to do worship. And the details and details and details, the proper procedure for, for bathing in so many buckets of water, and um, or clay pots filled with, with sacred water, and then smearing his body with fragrant oil, and then uh, dressing the deity and making offerings to the deity. That you see the anukut, the piles and piles and piles of cooked food, dressing the deity very gorgeously, performing arti, and then the distribution of prashad. And it was such a nice festival. The nearby village said, we want, can we do it tomorrow? And they did it tomorrow. And then the nearby village in other direction said, can we do it the next day? And it went on for a month. Every day, a big, big festival like this. And finally, at the end of a, that month time, formal worship was established just like this, just on top of a rock on the side of Govardhan Hill. He initiated some local people, trained them in the procedure of deity worship, and that went on for a whole year. And at the end of that whole year, he again had another dream. And in that dream, the deity appeared and said, it's really hot in the summer. Can you make an arrangement to bring some sandalwood and camphor to smear in my body because it's so hot in the summer here in Vrindavan? That very night, Madhavendra Puri left, he made arrangements for the Pujaris to continue Gopal's worship, and in the course of his travel, he passed through Shantipur, gave initiation, Diksha, to uh, Advaita Acharya, Madhavendra Puri, gave Diksha to Advaita Acharya, and then, in course of time, he traveled. This is a, another photograph of the Ramuna temple. That's the pink-colored one in the background with the three arches. And on the altar is the deity of Chirakura Gopinath. And there's a long story, which takes a whole class just to tell the story of the deity. It goes back to Lord Ramachandra's time without all the detail. It's a very special deity. And you see by the side of uh, Gopinath, there's two other deities. Those came more recently. When Madhavendrapuri came, there was just Radharaman. Not, not Radharaman, Radha Gopinath. Here's a close-up of the Gopinath deity. So um, he heard that they make nice offering of kheer. So he was desiring to taste the kheer so he could know how they made it and then he could offer to his deity, but then he felt really badly because I'm thinking about eating something that's not yet offered to the deity. So um, he, he waited for the arti to finish and he went and took rest in the back, feeling very repentant. What a, what a terrible person I am thinking to enjoy even before the deity has taken the offering. But the deity, Chira Kora Gopinath. Chora means he, he steals. Like Makan Chora. He steals butter. In this case, he steals Kira. Kira Chora. Makan Chora, Kira Chora. He steals. Krishna steals. It's okay, it's nice. So there's the deity. And, um, uh, in Orissa. Here's a nice painting from the BBT. It, it, hint, that's Radha Govinda. The artist made a painting of Chirakura Gopinath that I recognize. Anyway, so the deity had hid behind his cloth a pot of sweet rice or kheer. When the pujari made the offering, he didn't notice. The deity puts a pot behind himself 
And when he took the pots away, there was one less. So he, he woke the deity up in the middle of the night. Hey, Pujari, you missed that, that pot of sweet rice is meant for Gopinath, meant for Madhavendapuri. Go find him. He's in the, in the marketplace and bring him this pot of sweet rice. It's for him. So the Pujari went out, took his bath, looked behind the cloth. Sure enough, there was the pot of sweet rice. Do you need a chair? Do we have a chair? There's a chair in the back. But you, she won't be able to see if you, unless you bring it a little bit forward. Okay. I'm, I'm going fast because of time. It's a wonderful story. Maybe another time. Maybe another time. Maybe maybe another time. We'll just tell this Madhavendapuri story. It's a really nice story. But I'm going really fast. So he went out. He uh, found the sweet rice. And he went out in the court, in the marketplace, behind. Its marketplace was behind the temple. Madhavendapuri! You are the most fortunate person in the universe. Gopinath has stolen the sweet rice for you. Madhavendra Puri, you are the greatest Vaishnava in the whole universe. Where are you? The man woke him up. And Madhavendra Puri received the sweet rice. He was embarrassed and he was in ecstasy at the same time. He drank the sweet rice, but he knew what would happen. What would happen is he'd get he become famous. Oh, the deity stole sweet rice for him, so he left before the sun came up. Cause he didn't want people. He didn't want appreciation and glorification. But by the time he reached Jagannath Puri, because that was where he was going to get the camphor and the sound of wood, the, the word had spread already. Hey, he's the one that. Kopina stole the sweet rice for. So he was treated with all dignity and, and, and kindness and everything and everything. The local people, they provided him with a, 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 a several months supply of sandalwood and camphor and people to carry it and the papers to cross the crossing places so he could go all the way back to Vrindavan. By the time he, he got a uh, all the ingredients and started heading back to Vrindavan he passed one more time through Ramuna there's the temple again a closer up picture of the temple and he again saw the deity and guess what happened you guessed it he had another dream in that dream Gopal again appeared his deity Gopal said just stay here in Ramuna because it's late in the summer, it's really hot, and my body and the body of Gopinath are the same. Just stay there and apply this to the deity, the body of Gopal, Gop Gopinath, Akshaya Satya. So he applied the sandalwood and camphor for one month. Now, in ISKCON, we practice, we observe this Shandan Yatra for 21 days. In Puri, they observe it for twice as long. 21 days is what they do outside the temple. This festivities at Narendra Srovar and the boat festival and everything for 21 days, different clothing, commemorating different pastimes. Then there's 21 days inside the temple. The deity doesn't leave the altar, the Utsav, but it's a, another 21 days, exactly as it says in Skanda Purana, they do. So here's the the deities in Ramuna on Akshaya Tritiya. Now here's the verse that was spoken by Madhavendra Puri again and again and again and again and again as he was ending his life I deen the diadra nata he matura nata kadava lokya se 
O my Lord, O most merciful Master, O Master of Matura, when shall I see you again? This is the mood of, of the gopis feeling separation from Krishna. Because of my not seeing you, my agitated heart, hridayam tvad aloka kataram, my agitated heart has become unsteady. Oh, most beloved one, what shall I do now? Kim Karom Yaham, what shall I do now? Oh, most beloved one, what shall I do now? So the mood of separation, he awakened that mood of the gopis' feelings of separation from Krishna, passed that on to Ishwara Puri, Ishwara Puri passed it on to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who gave it to all of his followers. This is the samadhi of Madhavendra Puri that's behind the uh, Tota Gopinath temple, Shirakora Gopinath, excuse me, and there's the Murti inside. And the temple in Toronto named their deities after that deity, Shirakora Gopinath. That's the Toronto temple Radha Krishna deities. On Chandan Yatra, Just today, Radraman today in Vrindavan. This is the Madan Mohan deity in Vrindavan. And by the river Jamuna is the Imbital Radha Krishna. There they are. Lord Nishingadev. Now Lord Nishingadev's got nails, he looks like big sharp teeth, but he looks very clearly at these guys. And here's the Panchatattva deities, and uh, on their altar also, the Giriraj, Shiva, Sneer, and I 
There's a little tour of how in ISKCON, um, Chandan Yatra is observed and some, you know, the, the general understanding, of, uh, general understanding for people who are maybe not Krishna Bhaktas, but people in India generally, you're from India, so you all know, it's an auspicious day and giving in, well, things as it said, in this very beginning section from um, Hari Bhakti Vilas. Anything, any, any auspicious activity, taking holy bath, giving charity, taking some vows, chanting japa, chanting mantras, it gives us very special results. So I hope you did some nice devotional things today, along with hearing some of the the glories and significance of Akshaya Tritiya. One thought uh, to share with all of you. Kali Yoga is advancing. And as Kali Yoga advances, good things be get lost and other things replace the good things. Culture has lost the, 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 the sense of um, what makes India and, and birth in India, Punya Bhumi, is because people grow up doing all kinds of auspicious things, taking bath in sacred rivers and visiting temples and observing this festival and that festival and the other festival. and It's just a, a, a abundant opportunity for purification and elevation. It's just part of the culture. Prabhupada said, when, I was, when he was a little boy, whenever there was a public gathering of any kind, there would always, invariably, some recitation from Ramayana or Mahabharata. Now it's something else. Without giving examples, there's, you, you, you all know. How, it's, it's, it's important. In, in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is giving teachings that are introducing people to the principle. He's introducing Arjun, which means he's introducing us to the principle of performance of duty. And the purpose of duty, even if one doesn't know what it is, and if one does it, then there's purification. And if there's purification, then gradually consciousness is lifted, the covering is re removed, contamination is gradually removed, and consciousness is lifted. Those two things. Contamination is removed and consciousness is lifted from whatever the position one may be in, whatever the occupation, one may be in a, whatever it is, occupation, one may be a Shudra, one may be a Vaisha, one may be whatever one may be, but the, the elevation of consciousness is there. Just by all these things that are so natural, completely natural, but it's being lost. And what does that mean? Kali Yuga is progressing and things get darker and people get in disputes over nothing. And when there's something that it, and it's war, and, and uh, you know it's uh, people struggle with their own stuff, 
their emotional stuff. You know, it's just Kali Yuga just goes wild. The personality of Kali is dancing on our heads. And uh, so, so just like today, it's Akshay Chatiya. How many people outside of those born in India and those connected with this con that it may not be born in India are taking advantage of this auspiciousness? And, and, and our founder, Acharya, being so magnanimous, has spread it all over the world. He didn't give us all of these detailed things. It just was a festival, and we would, you know, make chandan and decorate the deity with chandan and have big festival, kirtan and tell, you know, narration of Krishna Kata of some kind, and distribute prasad. You know, create auspiciousness where there's inauspiciousness. To elevate people who are in the, the, the darkness of ignorance, but who's not in the darkness of ignorance, to a position of uh, spiritual awakening, cleansing and spiritual awakening, creating auspiciousness in life. So it's, it's um, the wonderful culture. Even if, like, you know, your, your daughter here may not know all these things, but slowly, 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 starting to understand and appreciating um, there's a deeper significance and, and importance to life than stuff that people are doing. It doesn't mean trash stuff. It just means there's something more important. And we're so fortunate that somehow we're so fortunate that there was such a caring and giving acharya to create the opportunity for Sadhu Sangha to come together and do what we're doing. I mean, I'm feeling very fortunate and trying to uh, share that good fortune with whoever wants to receive it. Okay, so Akshay Tritiya, let's see if there's some comments or discussion, anything wants to bring up? Okay. Raj, my question is not related to the class. Um, Someone asked me recently, what is the significance of uh, flowers in deity worship? And like, I didn't really know. Like, My understanding is not scriptural, it's just basic. Krishna has produced nice things. And we offer nice things. Because there's color and there's fragrance and it's natural. Like, you know, the things that are offerable. Water, fresh water, milk, fragrance. It, incense is because it's just fragrances from earth and flowers have fragrances from earth. You know, modern flowers, they just have color but no fragrance. But that's what it's, it's beauty and, and fragrance and something nice from that God has supplied and we offer it back to him. Raj, I had uh, one more question. Yes. And um, we see that when we are hearing Krishna Katha or even like chanting Japa, sometimes um, it can make us proud, the same activity, and sometimes we become humble by the same activity. Proud and humble? Yeah. Those two up. Yeah. Okay. So, like, how does like one go on the right track versus going on the wrong track? Because with the same activity, knowledge can produce.
Your question is how to stay on the right track and how to avoid the wrong one. That's your question. Well, knowledge certainly is helpful. Culture helps support knowledge. And good association helps foster culture. I've been uh, presenting a number of times now in, to a number of different audiences, and I just started it with the Chinese devotees. Gita values, showing that image you've seen, I think, the, the, the iceberg of culture. You've seen that one, right? So everybody knows what an iceberg is. You know what an iceberg is? You, you know what an iceberg is? Yeah, big block of ice. So in the big block of ice, you see what's it above the surface of the water, but an iceberg has this gigantic thing underneath the surface of the water. That's how the Titanic got crushed, because they hit the stuff that was below the surface of the water. So the iceberg of culture is explained this way. There's... Be, there's observable things that's part of culture, like how people dress, their mannerisms, their you know their architecture, and you know observable, measurable things. That's the tip of the iceberg. And below the tip of the iceberg is values, because values often drive behaviors, and speech, and they interact. Changing behaviors can help adjust values and vice versa. So there's an interplay. And then the very, very bottom of that culture, iceberg of culture, is unchanging certainties that because values can change and behaviors can change, but some things that don't change. So the iceberg of culture is to bring alignment. If there's no... Uh, I mean, let's say atheistic science has its its set of unchangeable certainties. All there is is matter. The laws that govern matter. There's nothing else. For example, and for for um, followers of Bhagavad Gita, there's we're, we're spirit soul, part and parcel of the supreme soul. Values and behaviors can be you know adjusted. Anyway. Your question was, bearing that in mind, <clears throat> how do you create spiritual culture? It's it's through the, through sound vibration and good association. Sound vibration where there's some faith. It doesn't have to be something giant; just some you know, basic faith, and good association that makes proper sound vibration, spiritual sound vibration, and they live accordingly. And that's how we can continue heading in the right direction. There's going to be the sine curve, the up and down, the hills and the valleys, where sometimes and sometimes, but we'll continue to head in the right direction, which is your question, by good association, sadhu sangha, where there's a, a, you know, some regard, some faith in that the characters and the character and quality of those sadhus, and that helps nourish our higher character and quality. And you know the methods of purification. From the knowledge of Bhagavad Gita, there's duties, and we do the duties because they're duties. And they help cleanse from the lower inclinations for lower modes of nature towards the higher modes of nature. And as that cleansing goes on, then there's more steadiness in the, in the culture of proper disposition of the heart towards the goal.
in two words it's sadhu sangat. Then you unpack it. Anything else? Yeah. So, Hare Krishna and my Maharaj and my was a Madhavendra Puri before he was a sannyasi like Gurdasa or um, Brahmachari or like one of them? Who was Madhavendra Puri a Grahasta or was he a lifelong ce uh, uh, celibate? Is that your question? Yeah. I'm I'm unaware of the earlier part of his life. I can research and let you know tomorrow. Okay. But I don't know, S sitting here. I don't recall having read anything that says, what was he, what was the earliest part of his life? But it's, you know, if there is something, I'll let you know tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, so all these auspicious events that happened on Akshay Tritiya, that makes Akshay Tritiya auspicious or um, something, some constellation was there because of which all these auspicious events happened? Well, you know, which is the cause and which is the effect is the question. And there, my understanding from what our Acharya say, not specific about Akshay Tritiya, but uh, auspicious events happen on auspicious days. Auspicious events happen on auspicious days. Like, you know, the, the appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu or the appearance of Krishna. Stars adjusted because it was the appearance of Lord Chaitanya, the appearance of Krishna, to create that auspiciousness. Although it wasn't the, the nature's arrangement in, in 100%, but it, it was, everything was shifted. So it's both. One into Im impacts the other and vice versa. Other? Yeah. Yes, it's in Madhva, Madhva's line. Yes. You mentioned about chanting, and you mentioned about charity, and... Do, do, do those things, the best things to do are the one things that inspire your devotion the most. Those are the best things. Thank you, Manish. Okay. Here comes... Microphone. I have two questions. One is because since it's Akshaya Tritya today, we're talking about it. Where does Devi fall into this Akshaya Tritya? Because I've heard a lot that because I also do Devi worship, so I just wonder uh, because I was chanting her names as well today. How how does Devi fall in this in this whole? Because I didn't see anything where. Like he's connected to Akshay Tritya. Well, nice question. Uh, I, I at the very beginning. No, no, I, I, I uh, read from Hari Bhakti Vilas, but I read from Hari Bhakti Vilas because it's about Hari Bhakti, and the the picture that. I'm, you know, I, I wasn't born in India. You were. And I didn't grow up worshipping Devi. You did. And I, I, I grew up, you know, in La La Land and met Prabhupada. No, a, a, a nice Christian family and all that, but I really didn't know much of anything. And when I met Prabhupada, I started understanding lots of things that I never understood. Now, the, in, in, in India, Akshaya Chutia is an auspicious day. And those who are worshippers of Devi 
they worship Devi, and, 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 and Akshay Tritya has a role in the, for the worshippers of Devi, in Devi of his her different forms and manifestations. I made no mention of that for one reason, that in um, the the line of Vaishnavas, we don't worship Devi separate from Shaktiman. Yes. So when when Ram is worshipped, it's not worship of Ram and Sita Ram, etc. Lakshmi Narayan, not worship of Lakshmi, it's worship of Lakshmi Narayan. And for that reason, no particular separate mention was made. So when when speaking of um, forms of the Lord, etc., that are honored in, in those special days, then it's uh, the, the she's included, whether whether honored specifically or not. Does that answer your question? Okay. I have is like if you could uh, talk a little bit about Mayapur Dham because I I mean it's You've funny because it, I live not heard because I've lived in a place close to Calcutta oh. but I never knew about it until some time ago okay okay well we say Mayapur but you know in a broader sense it's the district of Nadia which is a, a district, a ge, you know, a, a geographic district in Bengal. And Mayapur, Navadweep was the capital of the district of Nadia. And Mayapur is within the district of Nadia, near Navadweep, where Mahaprabhu appeared. Because Navadweep means nine islands. And the nine islands... One of those nine islands was the central island, was Antar Dweep, and that's where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared, is Antar Dweep, in the Nava Dweep region. And Mayapur is uh, the name of specifically, another name of that place where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared. So it, it's um, to... to it adds, uh, this is my sense, it adds a spiritual dimension to what otherwise might be just taken as a geographic place. District of, you know, Navadweep or Nadia, um, you know, a, 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 a devotee it has the name Navad, uh, Nadia Mani, the jewel of Nadia. That's Mahaprabhu. But, you know, the jewel of Mayapur money. <laughs> is the place where Krishna appeared. Mayapur is where Lord Chaitanya Lord appeared. Lord Chaitanya appeared. Okay, and, and performed his childhood pastimes. No, he moved around because he was young. He moved around, but he stayed within that area, the Navadweep area but specifically the birthplace area is Mayapur. So that's where it's... Ch up until he was 24 years of age, he stayed there. Then he left. Sanyas. Interesting. He was, he appeared as... He, I say appeared. He, he appeared because he just like fall from the sky. He was the son of Jagannath Mishra and Mother Sachi, but he appeared on uh, at, at its, well, there was events that preceded that, but he appeared on the, the occasion of a lunar eclipse at midnight, not at midnight in the evening. So it, it, when there's the occasion of lunar eclipse, there are auspicious things that are done because of the lunar eclipse, and he has, one of the auspicious things is taking bath in Ganga. And another auspicious thing is calling names of Hari. Because there are certain brahmanas that won't, will not audibly call the name of Hari except on such occasions. So many, 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 many thousands of people half immersed in the Ganges 
calling loudly, resoundingly, the names of Hari. That's when he made his appearance. Now, he appeared as the son of Jagat, like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, excuse me, as Krishna appeared as the son of Vasudeva Devaki. But it's not the, the normal kind of conception, procedure, same with Jagannath Mishra and Sachi. The son of... So, because there's, there's, a, there's a, a teaching of rasa, and there's... Do, doing it quickly... According to uh, Lord Chaitanya's teachings, and co co this is to expand it, uh, there's five primary rasas. One of those five primary rasas is parental affection. As in this world, there's parental affection. It exists because there's parental affection in the spiritual realm. And that parental affection of, let's say, Vasudeva and Devaki, or Yasoda and Nanda, they manifest themselves in Krishna's pastimes to experience that parental affection with Krishna. So, as one of the primary... So, so there's neutrality, servitorship, there's Sanskrit terms for each of these, friendship, there are different kinds of friends, different Sanskrit terms for friendship, parental affection, and conjugal love. Those exist in the spiritual world, and they also manifest themselves in the Lord's pastimes in this world, just like you know, any of the other incarnations, most of the other incarnations. I mean, Ashringa Dev appeared from a pillar, but most of the incarnations appear from a mother and father. And because they're parental affection. Vatsalya rasa. Vatsalya, parental affection. So they have that service of as if the mother and father. And he appeared as if their small child and performed childhood pastimes, etc. Anything else? Yes. Hi, Krishna Maharaj. Um, like uh, you sharing that in India we have so many different kinds of festivals. Yes. Here we don't have, we don't, not that we don't have, but we don't celebrate as many. So I was thinking like what can we do to bring that enthusiasm um, you have deity worship, and you have sankirtan, and you do you know that's the you do those things, and they're as purifying. They're fully purifying. That's what we do. Mm -hmm. It's not a substitute. It's it's the it's the pinnacle. Okay. Over two more questions and we're going to end. Hare Krishna Maharaj. So my question is that it's Akshay Tritya auspicious because all these pastimes happen on that day? Or is it auspicious because uh, that day is so auspicious that all these Times had to Your happen. mom asked almost the same question. <laughs> Did you hear her question? She, she, her language was different, but it's similar question, almost the same. And my answer was, the, the, they're kind of interchangeably cause and effect. But the, 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 when the appearance of the Supreme Lord comes, everything is adjusted to make it auspicious, but he comes at an auspicious time also. It, because it's auspicious. Things that are auspicious happen at an auspicious time. They're interconnected. One, they're, they, they, it's a team effort, right? Over in the corner. Thank you so much for that. But there is something which says that Kshetrita started, so the principle started and everything was begun that day. So, again, many 
detail. No, I, 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 I don't know any detail. Now, when Pravriti Marg started, I just was in Hari Bhakti Vilas. I don't know any history behind it. Yeah, it caught my attention too. And I was wondering if somebody was going to ask, and as we say, I don't know. <laughs> okay, she wants to ask something. Maharaj, I was still stuck when you were mentioning about the iceberg of culture where the values and uh, behavior is the tip that comes out and what breaks that whole together is the sadhu sangha. Yes. Um, I was wondering that when, when the, in the association of pure devotees there's the potential because of the um, immaturity to make offenses and that brings down its repercussions. So in the process of uh, you know breaking that value and culture and behavior thing with the association of satsanga this do we go backwards downwards with the offenses the, the, the good news is purity purifies and the greater concern is becoming complacent than you know, what if? So, so there's an online question. Pass the microphone. Uh, my, this question is from Shreed Das Prabhu. Uh, he says... Uh, In Singapore, by the way. Yeah. Uh, he says, Guru Maharaj, after a long time yesterday, many devotees from our center got a chance to do Harinam Sankirtan outside. I approached a Chinese person and shared the holy name and explained a little about chanting. One question he asked for which I puzzled in my reply was, Are you Hindus? May I know how do we answer the question to those who don't know anything about Hare Krishna's? Um, my answer to a question like that is, it depends. It depends upon the person and the circumstance and, you know, their, their level of interest. Is it just a curiosity, you know, spin the dial and then they have another curiosity question? It depends on the person and the circumstance, how you answer that question. I mean, yeah, you know, it, it depends on the the, the le their level of interest. Like, like, some persons are are thoughtful, and for persons who are thoughtful, then to to a, a thoughtful person, one could say. Let me just explain something about the word Hindu. First of all, and that you know, they're, they're, it's such persons that are thoughtful. It catches them like there's no such word in 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 our texts. It's it's the it's a word that comes from the invading armies from the northwest, from the Muslims that were coming, and in their language, an S becomes an H. So the Hindu is people on the other side of the Sindhu River. Then becomes Hindu. It means th those people on the other side of the river. So I'm not from that side of the river. I'm from Singapore. <laughs> and so um, the, 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 the correct understanding is, and then you, and he, you, so it depends if they're thoughtful. You know, some persons you might say yes, because they're not thoughtful. <laughs> you know, but what does that mean? What does that mean? It, you know, here's what it means. So it depends, if, you know, that and the circumstance and the person and the place and the time. Then they he the then uh, can explain, you know, Sanatan Dharma, what does Dharma mean? What does Sanatan mean? And uh, see if you know if they have any if that catches their attention. Because most people most people think in terms of isms, but this isn't an ism. This is Dharma means the characteristic of something. 
So what's the characteristic of a living entity? There's so many differences among so many living entities, but one thing is the same. What's that? That's that their dharma, their characteristic of a living entity. What's that? It's service. And in the service, in its in original and pure sense, is service to the Supreme or Sanatana Dharma. Because one of the names of the Supreme is Sanatana. The living entity is Sanatana. The relationship is Sanatana. The abode of the Lord is Sanatana. So it's Sanatana Dharma. That's what it is. Yeah, I'm, I'm part of Sanatana Dharma. I'm not a Hindu, but there's no such thing. It depends on the person. That's it. Thank you very much. Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai.